Hello, this is Lise Nielsen. I'm the artist in the woods. And in my latest video, the one that I am about to show you, I was painting at Anza Borrego Desert State Park in California. I had expected more colors, more flowers, uh, and it was very dry, very rocky, and it felt like everything was the same color. And as an artist, you learn to see better. You learn to see into the shadows. You learn to see color where other people might not see color. And so I really had to think and watch and see how the light changed and watch the shadows. And that particular day, we had just gotten there. And I was taken with this large palm tree. And so that is what this painting is. It is of the palm tree. You'll see me struggle a little bit with the scene. And, but I think it, it came out okay, and I want to work on it a little bit more towards the end of this video. I'll bring the painting out, and we'll take a look at it together, and I'll do a little more work on it. So I hope you enjoy this video. So I do have a small sketch of a palm that I did, and it's rough, but um, it'll give me a map of where I want to go with this. And I'm going to try to go ahead and do this. I did another sketch of the mountain, um, but I kind of like the palm. I put the palm in with the mountain also. I may go back later and do that, but I'll get the colors with doing the palm and the mountain behind. I try to do this. There's a lot of people around, which always bothers me. But uh, I go ahead and try to get this in and not. shape. 
darker down under, so I'll make sure I get those darks in. One, one negative about sitting in the on the side of the car is in the shade, I, it's a little harder to see the darks and that can uh, just cause me a little more difficulty to see it right. They're not 
not doing it now, but they were when I started this, so. see the bulk of the shadow, of course, because there's so much overhead of that. The first thing I notice is that the, the rocks in the picture are not working. And so I'll be changing a few things in this, uh, in this painting. And there are some things I really like about it, and there are some things I really don't like about it. I painted heavy. Uh, I did not use my thin paint. From the start, I needed to tone my canvas, and I didn't do that, and so it didn't work very well for that. But I can go back in, I can do some scraping, and kind of start over with a few areas, and then add some shadow where it needs shadow, uh, create more depth in the painting. So that's where I'm going with this. Here we go. So I've scraped out some of the rock. Um, I have scraped out the plants that were in front. I think what I have there is a good start to the painting. I have my photograph, which is great, and I, I know where I was going with it. I've got a really good start on it, actually, and I like the scene. I just need to really clean it up. And I am using some Cad Lemon and some Cad Red Light into that to warm it into the sand. Oh, yeah. You know, when you look at sand, you'll see different things going on there. So, um, and this would be sort of painting the negative space around this rock. So in essence, I am painting the rock. Is it lighter? Is it darker? Is it um, cooler? These are all of the things you're thinking of when you're when you're out in plein air. So you're you're making these comparisons. And now I'll do a little bit of palette knife work uh, just to create that sand. Because really, in my photo, I'm not really seeing that. So I don't know if I was borrowing it from area or what was going on in my head there, but it's not working whatever I was doing. It's not a bad painting. It's a, it's a start of a painting, and so I'm not really making any big judgments about it right now. I might throw it out later. I, who knows? I've thrown a lot of paintings out, but that's, that's just a growth, a, a lesson of growth that didn't work because. I, I love using the palette knife. I started using the palette knife a couple of years ago. I was always using my brush and was really afraid to take on something new with this. And I don't know why, um, but I was at a, an interesting, it wasn't really a workshop. It was like a mentor sort of a, a weekend. And I, I got, I, I watched a, a painter that I had done workshops with and she was using um, she was using uh, her palette knife. It's really awkward at first. You kind of feel like you're not completely in control with it. But I think that's why it's effective with plain air. I, I think it's because you lose a little of your control, and it starts to look more um, organic. 
that does make a lot of sense to me. So the shadows under the the um, this uh, plant right here are warm. Shadows will be different uh, different temperatures, so pay attention to that. And that's what I'm seeing there. That that's a that's a warmer shadow um, and a little bit less um, sharp because it's getting into the distance a little bit. That there's no light back there but there you need to show the contrast between that and the tree because the main event mostly is the the tree in this painting too so let that let that shine that's all i'm saying these, these things can play tricks on our eyes while we're out there as well are some highlights in here. This little one goes down. Play that up just a tad. 
All right, now those sagey plants that are back behind, I'm going to let those be rather bluish in tone, bluish. Uh, bluish green. Okay, that's better. And there are a few little darks in there. I'm dark though. So in this area, this is Palm Canyon, I think, Palm Canyon Trail. And um, people were walking up. There are all these palms way back in the mountain, in, in between the mountains back in there. And um, I'm not sure exactly how they got there, but that's what people hike the trail to go see, but it's pretty far up there. I think it's about a three mile hike. So I did not do that. I sat, sat there and painted that day. All right, and now I wanna go in with this tone here. Um, I remember seeing it as close to the color of the palm tree, um, it does look a little orangey to me, and it looks a little um, grayer or bluer than the palm tree, so I will paint it like that. And they were grasses is what they were. It was a, a plant that grew like grasses. Very pretty. To hit the highlights of those because what's under it is is what that is what I painted. So that's already there. And then I want to give it a little more color um, underneath, and we'll go with. some green and some red for that uh, the mixture that is a green and a red. And that's the complement uh, kind of a mixing that I do to make my my um, tones that are a little bit um, off. Not, not exactly green or not exactly red. Or uh, You just have to pick your grays. You have to decide what those are going to be made of. So let's see. Um, Ken Oster, um, in one of the workshops with Ken Oster, he, um, he said that, does, it, um, does the gray lean towards purple? Does it lean towards red? and then mix accordingly. He, he painted these beautiful scenes of the city and, and um, he's passed away now, but um, he was a very interesting artist and nice man, but that was, that was how he explained it and I appreciated it because it helped me to mix my grays. The shadow go out from that. All right, now um, the it it is starting to take a better shape. <clears throat> this plant, these plants back here, I want to downplay those, um, and I kind of left them alone because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do there. But um, I can do a little bit. I just don't want to do a whole lot on them, and they'll be a little lighter because they are in the distance. Back. You just try it, and then if it doesn't work, you gotta mix mix a little more of something into it, change the color a little bit, or remix it. Okay, and I am going to get a little red and let there be shadow in here using the red, and that looks really good against the green because it is the um, the complement of it. I just 
it's done too much. So now we'll go back in with a little bit of a little bit more of that. But that helps with the core of that plant. Okay, it's a little better too. <clears throat> so don't give up on your paintings because this is really all about going in and saving something because the way the state it was in, though I did have a fairly good video to show you, um, it wasn't it wasn't a painting I was gonna do anything with. It wasn't to that to that level where I was going to post it on my website or anything. And hopefully this this uh, this does get to that level of being able to do something more with it. So uh, I was pretty unhappy with it when I looked at it today. I did the uh, the the editing and I thought it was it had potential. So I was looking at it, but then um, when I pulled the painting out, I realized it really needed a lot of work. Um, you know, obviously I have enough on here. When I said that, when I was out there, I have enough on here now to do something with, with this, which is the truth. Um, but I also don't want to lose the, uh, the great stuff that, um, that, that you get from doing painting out in nature. It's really important uh, that you hold to that whatever that is that you saw out there, the colors, the shadows, work. This just needed uh, to be painted better. It just needed a uh, higher quality of painting and, and to actually go in and finish it. It wasn't finished. Okay, and I still need to do a little more on the top of this plant. Now that I've got that shadow in, I can go back in and do a little more of this plant. I love the soft uh, textures of these plants. Well, actually, you don't want to touch them, but I mean, the way they, they, they look soft, the soft uh, presence there, that's a better word for it, the soft presence of the plants. They probably are not soft plants. <laughs> Do not touch the plants in the desert. <laughs> Very silly. Okay, this, this rock, I am not sure, but um, I just wanted to a little bit more to give it give it its uh, character. It may be that I just really don't like the rock, <laughs> but I looked at it today and it, and it uh, it was it was fine. So I thought, well, I'll go in and, and see what I can do with it. So rocks are hard for me, at least. I mean, you could say trees are hard, but trees are nothing like rocks, and I don't know why I feel that way about rocks, but. Uh, just, I just need to do it more. And I've painted a lot of rocks over the many years I've been painting, so they're still hard. Anyway, if it, if it feels that way to you, don't feel so bad because it still feels that way to artists who have been painting for a really long time. So that's the, that's the thing. We don't do this because it's easy, right? This is not easy. We, we artists, or at least I do, I, I appreciate, I appreciate a challenge. So if someone says to me, you're not gonna be able to do that, well, guess what? I'm gonna tr certainly try after that kind of a comment. I, it, it's good to do what I'm doing. I'm kind of painting all over the painting. Um, and then to also, something I haven't done is stop and step back and look at it. So that's what I will do right now. I like the shape of the tree so much better. It's funny because I hardly did anything. I just worked on the negative space around it, but it's so much better. This is back here. What I can do is I can go in with the negative space around the rock and carve it out in there. So um, give that rock the shape it needs. I like using the, I, I said this already, but I really like using the, um, the palette knife towards the end of the painting, a little bit of a planting. It lends itself to the, these kinds of details. So that's uh, pointing my eye up to the main, uh, the main event. I don't need to do much to the palm. I think I did a pretty good uh, job on the palm. I wanna finish this, uh, this beautiful pinkish, tone that was down in here and it was a little warmer but light very light there's a lot of light on that um, these are these are old fronds down in here so um, they're feathery looking they you can see them you've probably 
probably seen a lot of palm trees, uh, but take a closer look the next time as an artist with an artist's eye, and um, you'll see this feathery looking texture to them. And they definitely are great to do around the Southern California beaches. So as we travel more and use our park pass that we just got, um, I'll try more of these. They're a lot of fun to paint. And I encourage you to also uh, try some subject matter that is not um, as comfortable for you, I guess, because you might find that it's something you really love to do. Um, I'm just about done with this painting. Uh, might define the path just a little bit more, but I am really glad that you have watched my video today, and I hope that you're, like I said, that you're learning uh, from some of the things that I'm telling you, telling you about, that uh, this is helping you on your path as an artist. Or maybe you're just interested in art and you don't like to do art, but um, you just like to watch it. Some of the best art <laughs> videos that I have, my husband and I used to fall asleep to them because they were so soothing. So that can just watch it for relaxation. Maybe. We used to laugh about that. Well, let's put so-and-so on, get a little rest tonight. <laughs> All right. I'm done. Hey, thanks for joining me here. This is Lise Nielsen, Artist in the Woods. Happy painting.